Hi everyone, it's me Darlene and we have our little visitor here today. Tigger's here. Say hi everybody. Give kisses. Mwah. Mwah. <laughs> well, I've come to the conclusion that I have run out of ideas for videos completely. I feel like I have absolutely nothing left inside me. <laughs> I do have videos that I want to talk about, but ow, that hurt, Tigger. Come, I put paper on the bed for you, just for you, so go play on it. Go on. Usually they like to lay on paper and stuff. <laughs> He's so funny. Yeah, I'm just, I don't know. I'm in a weird funk. And I get like that often, so I thought the best thing is to just push through it and not let myself just, uh, you know, become the hermit that I truly desire to be and just chat with you for a little bit. Maybe it will make me feel better. That is the whole purpose of me doing videos. I know you think I do this to entertain you, but I do this for you to help me because it just helps me to just talk other than just talking to my mother, which that very, very seldom ever helps my mood. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I can't can't talk to my husband about life issues because he doesn't care one iota about my life. <laughs> uh, I can talk to my son and he understands, but then I hate to bog him down with my issues because he's got his own. So <laughs> I was too young for me to depress her with the realities of life. So, <laughs> so you're stuck with me, you know. I was thinking of talking about my drinking, which would probably take like a series for me to get through it all. But the thing is, is with that, and I, I know that it would probably help some people in a weird way just to hear somebody else's story. But I just don't think it's kid friendly at all. And I know a lot of you have kids who watch my videos and I don't know if they're watching um, unsupervised. So I hate to, you know, jump onto an adult subject not knowing if your kids are going to watch it because I would be brutally honest. Oh, Tigger in a video like that. I'm over here! And you go lay down on the bed like a normal dog. Oh, you're not a dog, you're a cat. Okay, go, look. Crinkly, look, you like that. You like crinkly. Look, this piece, look, flutters around. There he goes. That's what a cat's supposed to do. I hate to, um, you know, I just hate to jump on a subject like that. And I mean, I know that it's not my responsibility to censor what your kids watch. I mean, hopefully all of you are paying attention to what they're watching. I don't know. I mean, I just, so anyway, that's why I haven't really decided to talk about that yet or just about so many things. I mean, it's like, it's good to talk about things, but sometimes it's hard to relive things. You know what I mean, Jelly Bean? And I, I don't so much have a problem with reliving it. I just feel like it's like such a long story. My whole entire life is a long story. A long and very, very boring one, I am sure. <laughs> so anyway, I don't know. What do we talk about? I'm looking to see if amongst all the junk in this room that there's anything I could possibly show you. I know many of you have asked to see pictures. I don't like to look at pictures because I don't like any reminders of the people who are dead. I don't like any reminders of my young life. I... I don't like reminders of anything. I know that most people, I think, I shouldn't say most because I don't know. I don't know. But I'm assuming that many people get comfort out of seeing photos. I get no comfort at all. There's not even anything remotely happy about it for me. I don't like it. I don't even like to see current photos because I know oh, that person will die soon, and then this one will be out of my life. And, you know, it's like, you know, I just don't like it. I just don't. I don't know. I used to do albums. I have a whole stack of photo albums here that I haven't looked at in years and years. I feel like I could just throw them in a fire and burn them all and not even care because they're books of memories, and I'm not fond of memories, I guess. Apparently. <laughs> 
So you know when we stopped using cameras with film, it's like that relieved all pressure. I can take pictures like a normal person and then just leave them on whatever phone or computer or whatever and never look at them again. I'm not even forced to put them in an album. But I have not one snapshot, I will call it, of my own granddaughter. I do have her class pictures. I don't know. I know it's going to sound awful. I mean, I can look at her class pictures and see my beautiful granddaughter there, but I see things like a child who's going to grow up and have misery and struggles and I, yeah, uh, I guess my therapist that I used to have would say that's your depression talking and I say it's my realistic logical self talking I just know that lives we get older and things can suck and that's what I anticipate for my own granddaughter so it's like Oh my goodness. But anyway, that, okay, that's the real me. So you know the real me. I, I do. I look at things negatively because that's the outcome that most people have. Negative outcomes. Isn't that sad? <laughs> if I were to start over, if I could really start over, I would never have been born. I would like to go back that far and make sure that I'm not born because I don't um I don't enjoy this process called life. I really don't. I find that it's it's bizarre. It's like why on earth are we here? I don't get it. So I would um how uplifting this is. <laughs> I think we're probably better off to talk about my drinking days. <laughs> ah, maybe we could talk about my drinking days for a little bit. Just start it off and then I can finish it in another video. What do you think? Mom, Dad, babysitter, whoever's watching the kids, I'm going to talk about drinking alcohol as a child. Beware. Kids shouldn't hear this. Okay, so maybe there's enough notice now. I will also put something at the beginning of this video, if I can remember, a caption. Here's what I know about my drinking. I started very, very young. I believe that I started younger than I can even remember because I can remember being very young and already being a drinker and it's like I, I'm sure a child doesn't get to being a drinker to that extent without having had it much earlier so um, without naming names I know that I had been given alcohol very very young the first time I remember getting it like getting drunk on my own is when I was 10 and I was at a wedding and I knew that in those days, the weddings way back, you know, booze was usually free, but everybody would have like a little cup of wine for the toast or champagne or whatever it was. And I remember at age 10 knowing that that was alcohol and going around and drinking as much of it as I possibly could. And I remember a relative saying, is she drunk? I mean, I was 10, so I'm sure it didn't take much, but I feel like I remember drinking a lot of it. So that is like my first time that I remember just drinking in public like like I knew what I was doing and like I needed it. I needed to feel that feeling. By the time I was 12, and if any of you are, are watching this who knew me throughout school, I would be glad if you even shared what you remember about my drinking. I would like to think that I know that as I got older, I was good at hiding my drinking, and as much as sometimes a, a drunk thinks they're hiding, you know, a lot of times people know, but I've had many, many people tell me that they never would have known that I was drinking. And I'm telling you, uh, as an adult, like throughout my 30s, the way I drank was really, really, it, was, it wasn't... A pretty picture. I mean, I'm very embarrassed about things that I did and, you know, drinking and driving, which I am so against and just can't believe that I never caused anyone harm. And, you know, all right, see, we got a lot to cover. Let's get back to me being young. 
I was 12 and 13 in junior high. Uh, some people call that middle school. So, but I was in, we had a school called junior high, Sanford Junior High, and the, it housed grades seven and eight. And I was 12 and 13 for those two grades. I was always the youngest in my class because my birthday is the last day of August. So I think there was like an October 15 deadline or whatever. There were a couple, and I even know who they are, but I won't mention their names. But I know there's a couple who are a little bit younger than me. And um, but the majority of the class was older. So by the time I was 12, I was drinking on a daily basis. I used to sneak booze into school with me. I can remember having it be hard to put my jacket in the lockers because of all the beer that I had put in the pockets. I had, we used to have what they called snorkel jackets. I don't know if I could find an image of one of those, but they almost looked like Eskimo Parkers or whatever. They had the fur around the the head and they were like green and, and they were very, very popular. And I'm sure there was a brand that everybody wore and I'm sure mine was the store knockoff because I never had anything brand name in my life. But I had actually ripped the pockets out so that I could fill the, the back of my my Parker, my jacket with beer because I couldn't put them all just in pockets. So I used to have holes in my pockets and I could slip beer into my pockets and then I would just line them up around the back of my by Parker. Where was I getting the beer? Um, I was stealing it. I was stealing it from wherever I could find it, including stores. So that wasn't a good thing, but um, that's how I got it. And then I used to, if I couldn't get my hands on beer, I would drink whatever I could find in this house. Now, I should mention, my parents were not drinkers. My father never touched alcohol until he was like in his like maybe early 50s, and his father was an alcoholic, so he didn't like it. But then there came a time that he would have a drink at night, and that's all I ever remember of my father drinking is, and I don't even remember him drinking when I was growing up because he always worked two jobs, and he wasn't the type to like, when he was a lobsterman, he never drank on the boat. I mean, you know, he, he didn't drink and things like that. It was really much when he was much older and he retired, that he would start to have a drink at night in front of the TV and he would literally, you know, a drink could last him all night long. He would just sip on it. My mother was not a drinker, but she would drink socially if we went out, but it wasn't like they went out. So for her to drink socially might have been once or twice a year at most, except for when I was older and was drinking, I used to like to make her drinks because I didn't want to drink alone. So again, we'll get to that part later. So by age 12, um, there was alcohol in my house at that point, and so I used to sneak what I could from my father without trying to get caught, and, you know, and I would, I would mix things together, like a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and I was big on, uh, cough syrup, so I used to even mix booze with NyQuil. Um, you, I know that sounds disgusting, and I was only 12, so that's even worse, and I used to be wasted, at school. I do not know how I got through the junior high years. I think those were my most wasted years. I think I did actually better in high school, but in junior high, I can remember one time waking up after having been passed out in the bathroom, in the girls' bathroom. I just woke up on the floor and had missed some classes. I don't understand how come nobody ever said anything or stepped in. It must have been obvious to teachers that there was something wrong with me. I mean, I just don't understand that. And then I stop and think, was that all a dream? Did I just make all that up? I mean, I look back and I say, did that really happen or am I imagining it? I don't think I could have that wild of an imagination. I don't think I could remember ripping my pockets and putting stolen beer in my coat and having a hard time to put it in the locker. I don't think I could remember, you know, pouring the NyQuil. I can't even remember a person who I shared a NyQuil drink with. 
by the place where we used to have, um, what do you call it when the electricity, we used to have a place where all the electricity thingies were, transformer or whatever. We went behind there. It was called Pike's Peak. And we went and sat on the dirt hill and I shared my booze with her. I don't think I would be making these things up. So <laughs> they're very vivid memories. Uh, and, you know, and, and listen to this story. I'm going to actually tell you this story. Okay, and I should also say that in junior high, I smoked pot every morning. I know people don't call it pot anymore, but in those days we called it pot. So from ages 12, 13, and 14, I was stoned every day. I was stoned and I was drinking. By age 14, I gave up on smoking pot. I used to get paranoid. It made me, um, you know, just have panic attacks. I, I just didn't like it. And have I tried it a few times in my life since then? Yes, but not for a long, long time now. Maybe like 15 years ago. I'd probably do it right now if somebody offered it to me. <laughs> I think after this video, I need something. So, um, and, and don't think that I just think this is funny, but it was my life. I really look back and hated everything I ever did or, you know, take this all seriously. I would go insane because it, it was, it wasn't good. It was not a good life. And I'm mad. I'm mad that nobody helped me. I mean, what kind of a family do I have that I was able to drink all my life like that? And, it was like it was unnoticed, and I know they noticed. I know they knew. I, I mean, it's like, I don't know. Oh, I'd like to say, well, it's because it was a different day. Oh, the cat cried, and it scared me. Oh, Tigger needs to go out. I shall be back. I have to try to make a mental note when I turn off my camera to try to remember what I was saying because I do not like to go and look through the footage because it's too long and boring. I know I was talking about me being a hula dancer. No, just kidding. I was up to the part that I was about to tell you a story and that I was also getting stoned, not just drunk. Yeah, so I'm trying to think if this was seventh grade or eighth grade. Again, I don't know how I made it through those two years of school. How did I pass my, how did I get good grades or did, did I get good grades? Did I pass my tests? I mean, I remember always being a good student. How did I, how did I do that? I don't understand. But, um, anyway, I, I remember this one time. It was me and two other girls. I remember one of the girls, not the other. And we were skipping a class. We used to be able to skip school in those days and just never get caught. I don't understand. Oh, yeah, I think I was talking about the time that I was passed out in the bathroom. How come no teacher ever came out to see where I was? I mean, it's like, I just don't get it. I just don't get it. But anyway, one time we had skipped a class or whatever, and we were outside, and it was winter, and the snow had a crust on it, so, and there was a football field behind the school, and a big hill to get down, and I don't know why we were going down there, but I don't think we even intended to go down the hill, but I just remember going down that hill, because it's like I had somehow slipped, or maybe we were trying to walk down that hill, but with the, the very hard crust on the snow, it um, made it impossible. It was like sliding on ice, and I ended up somehow sliding all the way down. I remember I was stoned because all I could do was laugh. I just could not stop laughing. Slid all the way down this hill, peed my pants, and completely ripped my pants in the back. So, uh, so I was stoned, probably also drunk. I had peed myself and my pants were ripped and somehow we had to go back to class. We were just skipping like one class or something. I have no clue how we got back up that hill, but the next thing I remember is being in the bathroom and giving my peed in pants to one of my friends, the one, one of the ones that was with me, she brought them to the sewing teacher and that teacher sewed those pants for me and brought them back to me in the bathroom and asked me if I was okay and I said yes and she said why are your pants wet and I said well because I fell down outside like you know there was no water it wasn't raining and that was it I put my pants on and went back to class what a day at school
And I, again, I was 12 or 13. It was junior high, so there was no way that I was older than that. By the time I was like 13, I felt completely old enough to be handling drinking. I mean, that's how how much I had been drinking that I don't even, even when I look back, I don't remember thinking I was too young to drink. I just felt like I was a seasoned drinker. That's all it was in my life. That's all I ever knew. So when I tell you guys that, you know, booze was a big part of my life, it was. And nobody ever, ever reached out. I do remember my, uh, in my father's defense, he worked two jobs all my life. Do I know he knew? Yes, my father was not a stupid man, but I don't think my father stood a chance with my mother. My mother was the one who ruled this house, and I really believe that my mother overlooked everything that I did, and my theory is that it was because she kind of, in her own special way, didn't really want me to succeed. <laughs> you know, I know that sounds, that sounds mean, but um, my mother is narcissistic. I'm actually going to say it, and I, and I don't mean to say it in a way to put my mother down, but my mother is narcissistic and cares only about herself. And if you ever read anything about um, daughters with a narcissistic mother, there's different roles sometimes that children play when they have a narcissistic mother. And I was the one that, that got everything dumped on me because I was the last one in the house. You know, everybody else was older than me and grown and moved away. So I think in her way, she just figured if I was doing stuff like that, I was never really going to succeed. Maybe I was never going to leave her. And uh, it was just like when I got pregnant, it was like a way that, ha, it just cemented it in that, you know, Darlene needs to stay living here and to be with us. And now I'll help her raise her son. And, you know, of course, I was just a teenager. So my parents raised my son. I mean, I still went on and lived a, a, a teenage life, an alcoholic teenage life to make it worse. So, um, you know, <sighs> Oh my God, am I really going to post any of this? I think I'll actually stop now because we, we got up to, um, what, age 13 <laughs> to be continued. But anyway, I was saying that I do think that obviously my mother knows, knew, and I, and I remember things. I remember one time my father coming home from uh, a third shift job. He used to come home and get ready to go on the ocean. So he had come home and found me passed out outside. I mean, I remember that. And, you know, he's just like, come on, let's go in. And I remember him helping me in the house. I remember times, you know, falling, just walking and falling in the house. And I know one time my mother said something like, oh, what's the matter with her or whatever. And but nobody ever sat me down and said, there's a problem here. You have a problem. And I don't even think it would have been right to tell a 12-year-old alcoholic that I had a problem. I think we had a problem. I don't think that problem started with me. That problem started elsewhere, and it's how I dealt with it. It makes me very sad that I lived that life, and it makes me very mad that nobody cared enough to try to help or didn't know how to help it just blows my mind and there are times that I would like to just say yeah I think I've imagined all that because boy it would be nice to know that that's not how my life went and uh, this is the tip of the iceberg that I'm telling you guys I mean you can only imagine what a alcoholic 12 year old's life is like I mean it's it's not good and it's things that I didn't talk about to anyone you know, to anyone. And I know other kids did drink and stuff, but I don't know anybody who did it to the extent that I did and hid it like I did. So, okay, how was that? <laughs> and I don't drink now. But the thing is, and, and I hate to say this because I know there are so many people that are going to say, well, then she's still an alcoholic. I will always consider myself an alcoholic who is not drinking. But the thing is, is that I have and probably will have a drink now and then. The last time that I had anything was August of 2014. I had two screwdrivers and earlier that year in May, I want to say, I had 
well, I was going to say three beers, like two and a half beers over the period of a whole afternoon. And it's, I just, I don't crave it, but if something were to come up and it was available to me, I have nothing against having a drink because I will never, never be a drunk like I was. It, that's just not in the cards for me anymore. But, I mean, like last summer I even went to a, a wedding and I drank just water. I fully intended on going to that wedding and having a drink or two, but it was hot and there was no air conditioning and I knew if I had any alcohol at all, I would just like be a, a bath of sweat. So I had ice water with lemon. I didn't even have soda. I mean, I just had water and lemon. You know, it's not like um, I have a problem with drinking anymore, but I, you know, I, I certainly would not want to have it available on a daily basis, but, you know, if I go to a restaurant or something extraordinary and I don't have to drive, I have nothing against having a drink. But it has been 16 years now that I haven't been drinking. Ex that scared me, except for, you know, once in a blue moon. But I don't want you to think that that can work for everybody. Some people just can't ever, ever touch it again. And, um, you know, if somebody told me I would never be able to touch it again, I don't care. I, that's how little I care about booze now. It doesn't matter to me if I never touch it. Um, okay, that's enough to be continued. I'll try to, like, start from this point the next time I feel up to talking about this, unless you guys think that I've said enough and you don't need to hear more, because um, it gets bad. No. <laughs> and I laugh through it all. All right, that is it. Thank you for listening. I hope this is one of those videos that I'm going to publish and then go to bed and say, oh, I hope I never wake up. So it scares me. It scares me very much to put myself out there like this. And, um, you know, it's just, it's a weird, it's, it's weird to do stuff like this. But um, depending on the feedback I get, it might help me a lot. It might. It might help some of you. It might, you know, make you think, I don't know. I'm tired of talking. All right, that's it. Bye.